Let's see, Robert and Josh, we got Goblins versus Mono White Aggro. Josh in the black, Robert in the red jacket. Might be a little more appropriate if Josh was wearing a white shirt and Robert was wearing a red shirt, but it's what it is. Well, we'll pretend. <laughs> Right, so it be interesting to see who has the uh, the play. It's definitely going to be an advantage in, in, in the uh, aggro matchups. But I, I can't wait to see the mono white deck in action. This looks... Hmm. For those of you who are just joining us here, this is Star City Games Live, coming to you from Atlanta. The... Uh, first event of this StarCityGames.com open series and we're going to be ending this season in Baltimore for our eventual invitational so that's going to be pretty exciting when we uh, we get about three months away from now and having people come up to Baltimore yeah it's gonna be fun I mean four invitationals this year is, is it's awesome quite the feat but I'm, I'm sure we can pull it off and, and I'm sure everybody will have a great time coming so absolutely It'll be interesting to see how uh, how Legacy evolves by the time we get to Baltimore and Dark Ascension comes out. So, so I, I don't think uh, Avacyn Restored will be out by the time the Invitational comes around. But I could I could be wrong. I, I'm not sure on the release date. I always yeah. struggle on the release dates. It's like Robert is taking a mulligan here. Most likely. One actually, there is one other interesting card. Robert Cohn, he's playing 61 cards. His 61st card is a Miser's Singleton Goblin Grenade. Ooh. And, you know, that's actually kind of interesting, because for the most part, Goblins, as, a, as an archetype in Legacy, it plays out, just pushes all kinds of stuff onto the table, and it doesn't really have anything that's going to be very surprising. Um, if it has a, uh, a Lord out, like a War Chief or a Chieftain, it can, you know have more attacking you than you might have realized was going to come, but that's the only real way it has a surprise factor. A goblin grenade to potentially kill someone out of nowhere, that's kind of interesting. I I'm not sure if it's good, but I don't mind one goblin grenade. I, 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 I like the one goblin grenade. I, I think that's, I, I agree with you. I think that it's, it's kind of one of those come out of nowhere cards and I, I, I think it might do well. So, Ooh. Oh, Robert going Shifts down one more again. time. It's like down to five cards. Josh, I'm gonna say Bergoa. Josh Bergoa giving a smile there. I'm I'm one of those people that uh, I never verbalize that I'm happy to see my opponent mulligan, but I do have to say in my head I'm like, Phew, yes. <laughs> like all right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I always prefer to have a to have games where we're, we're both on equal footing. There, I, I, I hate it when they mulligan, especially if it's just like they just mulligan to oblivion and they you just destroy them. And like I just almost like don't want to play stuff because <laughs> you know, I don't want to destroy them. But to to be fair, if every opponent I had always mulligan down to three or four cards, I probably wouldn't play Magic anymore. No, it wouldn't be a very fun game, not at all. So hopefully, hopefully Robert will we'll get a good five and we'll see a good game of Magic here. That's what I'm. That's what I'm rooting for. But I definitely, I definitely think I'm. I'm. I'm leaning more towards the uh, the death and taxes deck. Yeah, uh, I, I. I definitely I agree. I think in terms of what I would like to see do well, it's partly that I love seeing the flicker wisps. I know that's such a spicy card. I mean, just just kind of looking at this deck, it could almost be played in modern. And uh, on the Salmalka front, Salmalka takes yet another one down. One second, I'm gonna give him a high five. Yeah. In the games and play front, we have a turn one goblin lackey. And so this is one of the exact opening draws that you're going to want to see from goblins. He's got other things he can put in here that could make this double mulligan into something really scary. A siege gang commander could come down on turn two. Who knows? I can't see his hand, so uh, it's like Josh just leads with the planes. Probably got a swords to plowshares for that uh, lackey, but I don't know. They're holding their hands up, so we can't quite see what's in there. Swings in and bye bye, Mr. Lackey. Robert taps two and 
super dudes. Alphabetical. Okay, so Josh goes for his turn, draws a wasteland. I think he's got another wasteland in there. And he goes for Stoneforge Mystic, looks like. Probably going to go fetching up, I believe he has a Sword of Fire and Ice in his deck. There he does, he does have a Sword of Fire and Ice. Ooh. He might get Umazawa's Jite, but I think that sword is going to be a little bit more effective at this point. I think so too. But GJ can be pretty good against goblins, but goblins can get extremely explosive quick. And even even with Robert only having so few cards in hand, it, 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 it's, it's still, you know, he's still not out of the game, so. If you want to uh, ever look up what a GJ is, it's actually kind of a disgusting little weapon. And what does a, a GJ do? It, well, you're not supposed to have blades around the Emperor, and so it was used to hook into things. And so you use it to, like, hook into people's, like, face. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's Clothes nice. more often, but if you wanted to be really mean, you could, <laughs> you could go into whatever there was around. All right, so Robert's got an Aether Vial and a Mogwar Marshal. And he played a Wasteland this turn. That's a scary-looking goblin token right there. Aether Vial. So, see what I mean? This deck can get explosive quick. I mean, he's mold to five, but he's got, you know, four permanents in play. Or, excuse me, seven permanents in play, four creatures, or three creatures, one artifact. Right. He can threaten to attack on this next turn, presuming, uh, you know, that he doesn't let the Mog War Marshal die and then just top deck a chieftain. The, the safe play will let him attack for seven. Obviously, well, six after the block from the, the Mystic. Wasteland from Josh Bergoa. Let's see if we can... He's got the GTA, we know. He's keeping this, his hand pretty guarded. This might be just a, a moment where you pass. Oh, he's got a Sarah Avenger. Robert Cohn putting on the table a now legal reminder so that he does not forget to pay for Mog War Marshal. Back in the day you could not give yourself reminders like that. Flicker Wisp comes into play and it's going to um, flicker something out for a moment. Does that resolve? No hand, no cards in hand. Robert's going to be like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Away goes the Mystic. And probably going to go get that comes sword. Comes <laughs> back. Very nice. Sort of fire and ice. He untaps, he removes his reminder counter, puts it on the Aether Vial. Mm -hmm. Does he remember? Uh, oh, oh, he almost doesn't do it. Oh, okay, almost. he chooses not to do it this time. Okay. I still doesn't want to get that. Uh... He's hoping for a top deck here. Um, a Goblin Sheaf, for example. Ooh. Checks how many cards Josh has. Now he wants the chieftain here, um, I believe, rather than the war chief. The chieftain gives the uh, gives his creatures haste, so it gives that other uh, that brand new goblin token power to swing in. And also the plus one plus one is the uh, the thing he's hoping for as well. But what is it? What does he have? I can't quite make it out. Can you? I I can't see either. They both these players to uh, keep their hands. That Not where we can see. <laughs> the pile driver becomes a 3-2, easily tradable from the Wisp, and the other Goblin, a 1-1. One, one. So. He loses a token, trades the pile driver for the Flicker Wisp. I think that's a fair trade. I'm not happy with it, honestly. He lost uh, two of his cards there to get rid of a Flicker Wisp. Wasteland's the Wasteland, and what else you got there, Robert? Is that all? That's all. Josh Bergoa draws another Stoneforge Mystic. Wasteland in hand. Josh mm. taps two mana. Is this going to be a Sarah Avenger? I think so. It's the only other card I know in his hand, at least. Oh, oh, oh the Gite. Gite. Nice. Taps one mana for an Aether Vial. And ships the turn. And he puts in another. That's Goblin Lackey. 
Yes. Up to two on the aether vial. Draws... Probably not what he wants to draw. The best card he could draw right here is, is a gem palm incinerator. <laughs> or even two or three cards. <laughs> well, the gem palm would kill the mystic and then draw him a card. So right. that would be pretty good. That would be like drawing two cards. But definitely in a tight spot, for sure. Two mana. He equips the Jitae. Attacks. Yeah, I, I think Josh is definitely fine with uh, trading his Stoneforge Mystic for uh, t those two goblins. Both the goblins block. A Swords to Plowshares here would be pretty devastating. Actually, you know, even nothing happening is still pretty devastating. Yeah. He has to get rid of two of his guys. And the GTA gets counters and. Just he has about to, game, boys. He has to sacrifice that token before there's going to be a, both of them dead. There we go. And now they're both dead. Well, he's like, well, what you need killing? Okay. Lackey's going to die. Sure. And now he just leaves that Jitae out there with the two tokens. Two mana, Sarah Avenger. And there, there it she is. comes. Such an interesting card. You can't play it on the first three turns. I agree. It's really, really cool. But is that an earwig squad? Attack and for none. Nope. <laughs> Vile goes up to two, I believe. Stoneforge Mystic in hand. I can't see any other cards. I know that um, there's a Sword of Fire and Ice in hand, though, as well. There's a Wasteland. I think this was Shoddy in port, but eh, same difference. Oh, is that a Rishan port? Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, he's got four. And Sarah Angel gets suited up. Tax for uh, at least two, maybe more. I'm oh, sorry, at least three. Three. At least three, maybe more. Uh, looks like he's, like he's going to pump some. Me? And here comes the sword. And looks like Robert's asking what kind of lands he's got in play. But it's really to tough three. for him. Really tough for him right now. He's got a goblin lackey, airwig squad. And it looks like maybe is that another aether vial? Lackey. Can't I can't tell. tell. I think it's a vial. Um, looks like some conversing going on. Maybe Josh is saying, well, this is how I can kill you. And Josh untaps very coolly. Drops Stoneforge. Oh, excuse me. He just uses Aether Vial to get that Stoneforge in. Hmm. So good. I think he's going to go get the uh, Sword of Feast and Famine. And there it is. So many equipments. Only the three. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all of three of them. <laughs> well, I mean, in play, that's... Whew. With four Stoneforge Mystic and Flicker Wisp, he can expect that most games he'll have out both of those equipment. As long as he's not dead or his opponent isn't already dead. Oh, of course. And that can happen in Legacy. Did not see what he draw, what he drew. Indicates an attack with the Sarah Avenger. She has been a cruel mistress this game. Equip. Guess we're not quite ready to attack. Uh, 
here comes a flicker wisp. Flicker wisp. Gonna get rid of that token, I bet. Almost looked like he was pointing towards the ether vial, which probably is incorrect. Wow, you know, he, he, he's like, good enough. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose if he gets rid of the aether vial, then there's no sneaky tricks that can happen during right. combat. Okay, so let's look at these sideboards here. Okay, what we're probably going to see from the goblins list, shattering spree maybe, but the thing is, even though his opponent has aether vial and has um, equipment plus stoneforge mystic plus flicker wisp, um, it's one of those cards that you're probably not going to bring in all three unless you think that the equipment is really, really scary. So we'll have to see what Robert Cohn thinks. I think you're going to bring in some number of them, probably two, mm -hmm. maybe the third, but I'm not sure about anything else. Yeah, I, I, I would say one or two would be a fine number. Um, what, um, now, he knows he's playing against a deck with um, Sarah Avenger and Aether Vial, so that means there's going to be a lot of creatures most likely. Sharpshooter is probably a really good option against a lot of creatures. His earwig squads seem a little bit underwhelming to me for the most part. I might I get agree. rid of the earwig squads. Pile driver also seems like it's not necessarily all that great. Pile driver often a, a card that's not that great unless you're in a true racing situation. And uh, I think you might just replace some of those cards with the shattering spree, sharpshooter, and perhaps just a couple of thought seizes to uh, keep his opponent off of his toes. Seems, this seems pretty good. Uh, let's see, Josh has got three Lion Tutors, Tormod's Crypt, Relic of Progenitus, Absolute Law, either Sworn Canonus, three Leon and Arbiter, one Menriki Gusari, one Stony Silence, uh, one Wheel of Sun and Moon, one Aura of Grace, and one Batter Skull. So, I, th I think he's pretty favored here already. Um, I don't mind Leon and Arbiter as a card to yeah. uh, bring in against Gen or uh, um, against uh, Goblin Matron, which he knows is going to be in his opponent's deck. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it's not a terrible card just to slow down fetch lands from an opponent that has probably at least at least four, but maybe even eight fetch lands. In this case, the number is six. Yeah. Well, of course, Josh doesn't know the exact number, and it's just usually common. Yeah. The Goblin decks do have like some eight. number. Batter Skull is another card, actually. I think yeah, I would, would I would bring in. that one in um, to help help gain back some of the life loss if he gets an aggressive draw. But I, I mean, he's got Tormod's Crypt, Relic of Progenitus, Wheel of Sun and Moon. That's I don't think that's gonna really help him out. Uh, I mean, that's for Dredge. The Enlightened Tutors. I don't really see those. Um, Absolute Law. Absolute Law is very good, um, but. Uh, I think that's the black one. Nope, that's the red one. Creatures oh. gain protection from oh, red. Okay, yeah. Now, that's he's a bringing good one. in that yeah, one. Yeah, I was he's bringing, bringing in that one. Off. Most definitely. Um, let's see. Is this one Canonist? I don't see that coming in. Uh, the Manrique Gosari, no. Stony Silence, now that's. It turns off um, artifact, artifact activations. Ability, yeah, so, no. And Aura of Silence. That's a seal of cleansing that has the yes. additional ability of making opponents. Art enchantments and artifacts cost two more. That's right. Yeah. So again, not something he'd bring in. So and he, he he seems really favored in this matchup anyway. So um, I I might see him bring out the Mangara of Corondors. Those guys seem pretty slow. Um, let's see, maybe the Phyrexian Revokers. That seem pretty good though. Revoker can turn off Aether Vial, but it turns off your own Aether Vial. Yeah. Otherwise, there are not going to be very many um, cards that he's likely to see from his opponent. Yeah, he, he might take out the one Aven Mind Sensor. I don't really see that doing too terribly much. Um, you know, even, I mean, in this matchup, it seems like the most it could be is a 2-1 is a, you know, Flyer. It kind of shuts off his fetch lands, but... Hmm. Yoten Grunt seems fine. Mother Room seems fine. Now Robert Cohn here, he's definitely hoping to get a chance to play with a full car, uh, a full hand. Did he go down to five this yeah, game? Yeah, he went down to five yeah, that's that game. Rough. So I mean, he, he was he was definitely uh, 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 on on the on the back play the whole game. But uh, you know, he'll be on the play this this game, and hopefully he'll have a good draw. I I, I like watching good games of magic. And that was a pretty good game. It was, it was 
pretty well fought for having a five card hand. Robert Cohn yeah. did what he could. I mean, he was gonna be behind pretty much from the get go, and he, he did what he could. Josh is looking like he's feeling pretty confident. So, interesting to see how game two goes. For those of you who are just joining us, you are here at the very first Star City Games Live Open Series of the year in Atlanta. Normally I'd like to say sunny Atlanta, but today has been a day of fog. Um, this whole convention center looked like it had been accidentally transported to the world of Silent Hill. <laughs> and uh, it was pretty creepy out there this morning. Thankfully, no scary, morbid things happened. Inside here, we're in the final round of the Swiss. It's round eight of the Legacy. Charles Gindy has already won yes, this morning the standard portion, and he was playing what he was terming, terming Geist Blade, a invisible stalker and Geist of St. Traft deck that is pretty close to the illusions lists that we see in blue-white, but taking out the illusions entirely, not even Phantasmal Bear, in favor of um, the untargetable powers of Invisible Stalker and Geist of St. Traft, as well as fitting in Moreland Haunt. This makes him kind of similar to Adam Prozac's deck mm -hmm. that we saw at the Invitational um, not so long ago. Meanwhile, um, just moments ago, Saul Malka took down the very, very first draft challenge of the weekend. Um, and as Zach said earlier, that was my called shot. I said yesterday, Saul's going to win the draft challenge tomorrow. And he said, but, but Malka is not even here. And I'm like, he will be. <laughs> Turn one mountain from Robert Cohn here. These two players playing for top eight. He's playing goblins, Aether Vial from that mountain. Seems like a pretty good turn one to me. Mm. Planes from Josh Bergoa. Let's see. Looks like I saw a, uh, a sword of fire and ice in a wasteland for Josh. And Robert's got an aired mesa. Uh, looks like a couple other lands. And looked like an earwig squad. I could be wrong. Looked like a black card at least. And Josh taps two for... Absolute, Absolute law. law. All creatures gain pro red. Now that does mean that Robert cannot accidentally target his own creatures with um, Gem Palm Incinerator. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm, yeah. I'm actually quasi-serious. I mean, there are cards yeah. that you cast and uh, this isn't Magic Online, so you're not forced to finish targeting something once you've cast it. Um, you can be like, oh, that's an illegal target. I guess I'm not doing it. This is, this is paper magic <laughs> here. But <laughs> oh. Gem Palm Incinerator cannot be cycled now. Wow. Uh, Josh is probably feeling pretty confident with that one. I don't really know if Robert has a good way to deal with that. Actually, I don't think he can deal with that at all. Um, his way to deal with it is to just ignore it and hope he kills um, Josh anyway. Mm. Ooh wee. And uh, random other note, Magic fans, happy birthday to Zv Mauschwitz. If you're out there, Zv watching, happy birthday. Aww, birthdays are so wonderful. <laughs> They're my favorite part of the year. Aether Vial ticks up for Robert Cohn. He does have a, uh, looks like a Goblin Warchief in his hand. Goblin Warchief, one of the key cards for goblins. The ability to make all of his spells, or nearly all of his spells, cheaper, plus bringing on the haste, can make goblins do some absurd things at times. Well, this is, if, if, if Robert does end up pulling this out, this will definitely be a hard fought battle for him. The, uh, the, you know, it seems like this matchup is, is definitely centered around a bit of a creature war, and even though Josh has got a kind of a slow start, having all his creatures' protection from Robert's creatures is going to be pretty good, but... So, we see a Goblin Matron from Robert Cohn. I would not be surprised if he gets a Pile Driver here. End of turn puts it into play with the Aether Vial. Then in the next turn puts a Goblin Warchief into play with the Aether Vial and then cast something fierce for a huge attack. Yeah. Hmm. Looks like he's 
pulling some I see options. a log war marshal as well. Really? He goes with the pile driver. Yep. Seems like a fine choice. Shuffles up. Now, we already know the war chief's in his hand. So what that means is he can actually um, threaten a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage, plus whatever he can cast off of um, goblin war chief and four mana. Ooh. That's goblins, so though. They do that. We see three land taps. Is this just a... Mangara of Corondor. Hmm. What does that do? That's uh, cool you stuff. Tap, you tap it and you remove it and oh, another yeah. creature from the game. Oh, I absolutely know. Um, but that was what Robert Cohn was asking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hence the reading there. End of the turn, we have the Goblin um, pile driver come down. Robert Cohn untaps. He's going to tick up that, uh, that vial. And he's going to hope for something really awesome here to do a huge blow to Josh Pergoa. If he gets the right draw, he can do a ton here. Hmm. Yes. I see a lackey, I see a war chief. I think I see a chieftain as well, but I'm not sure. That's a sting scourger. Ooh, sting scourger. That does not have a, uh, a, a bounce ability when it comes into play. It can still be cast though, to be a yes. two one. So, unfortunately, we'll have no legal targets. Thanks to absolute law. My uh, my my director is, I think, trying to get me to make some references here right now. So <laughs> uh, I'm I'm stoically refusing. <laughs> Down comes the chief, war chief in play now. All of his goblins hasty. All of his goblins slightly cheaper. Is that a matron in his hand? I think so. If that's a matron, he that's... can do a lot. He can get a pile driver and cast it for the single red. Matron. Yep. Let's go tutor my deck for a goblin. There's a few of them in here. Okay, now, without even laying a land, that means he'll be able to attack with five goblins. Each of those pile drivers will be attacking for nine. The matron will be coming in for one. One of the pile drivers will be blocked. That's ten. That's eleven. Thirteen damage is what he'll be able to put on the table this turn, Oof. assuming that he doesn't even have another mountain. If he has another mountain, that thirteen will immediately jump up to seventeen. Goodness. Even with absolute law and play, Goblins is still going crazy like it always does. I can't see what he grabbed there. It was slightly off camera. Hmm. I really wish I... I bet you it's a pile drop. Ooh, a ringleader. So he's not going for the kill now. He's going for a kill a little bit later. I would almost try to go for it now, but he might not have that mountain in his hand, but... I mean, with Josh only having one creature on board, a lot of Josh's creatures are cheap, so he can, you know, just unload his hand next turn and have a, just a ton of blockers, because, you know, his goblins don't have trample. Okay, there's the lackey. The lackey can put the, uh, <laughs> the ringleader out immediately, assuming Ooh. it doesn't get blocked. And the thing is, is that you actually really might want to block the lackey, but that pile driver can come in for nine. Goes in for the attack. So let's see how Josh ends up blocking. This will, this I think this will definitely be the turning point of the game. Just how Josh decides whether to you know what creature to block. Well, that's and definitely I, I, where I, the path I, is going to be. I think you're I think you're right. I think he has to block the lackey here. I'm um, not sure that you have to block the lackey. I'm I'm just saying that the the results of not blocking the lackey is a lot of damage. But it just—it depends on what Josh has in his hand. Because if he can unload a lot of his creatures, he'll be able to to block the rest of the damage next turn. And, and I'm not sure about Robert's choice to get that um, to to get that ringleader. Um, I, I actually really like the idea of having a uh, two pile drivers coming on in. Robert does not have the mana. Next turn, it's going to be a free ringleader from the Aether Vial unless something happens. Josh does take a whole lot of damage, though. That pile driver hitting him for nine. Let's see. I 
did not see what card he drew. A secret, secret card. Secret cards. I saw he's got a Sarah Avenger in his hand. I think I saw a Mother of Runes. The best thing that Josh can do right now is drop as many creatures onto the table as possible. Absolutely. Wasteland, the wasteland. That's clever. I haven't seen that done in Legacy at all. It Never. happens. It happens. <laughs> oh. And a Sarah Avenger, probably. Mm. And perhaps Caracas and a mother. I don't know if that's going to be enough to soak up all that damage. And he attacks. Wow. Oh, he removes the Aether oh, Vial. Oh, he removes the Aether Vial. There we go. Okay, that makes more sense. Yes. I was, <laughs> I was confused for a second there. I'm like, yeah, I, I, wow. I, I forgot that uh, Mangara can remove permanents. And or there's, non -land there's the Badlands that he can cast the Ringleader. Goblins not only has tutors, it also has factor fiction. Let's see what the ringleader shows us. One, two, three, four. Only two goblins. Tuck Tuck Scrapper and Goblin Chieftain. There are no artifacts for the Tuck Tuck Scrapper to scrap, but uh, it's still a, uh, a goblin. I think, was that a surgical extraction in Robert's hand? I, maybe, I have not like seen it. one. I, I didn't see it. I, I, if you saw it, it's possible. He does have surgical extraction in his sideboard. Yep, that is surgical extraction. So he's got surgical extraction, he's got sting scourger, tuck tuck scrapper, and the chieftain, that's right, okay. Now if, if Robert were to attack this turn, he would lose his two best goblins and only deal, it looks like, five damage only. So it would knock his opponent down to two. That's not unreasonable, but if he waits, he can do a lot more. It's not likely that Josh is going to be able to unload enough creatures to substantially change the board after Robert puts more on the table himself. Oh, wow, a wasteland. Very good for Josh being able to stunt the ability of Robert Cohn to unload onto the table. Sarah Avenger is vigilant. Yes, she is. Gets in there for three. And Josh taps three for another Mangara. So let's see if Robert can get the explosive turn that he's looking for. That absolute law is just. Ooh, that's making things tough for Robert. Doesn't look like he drew a land. Now, a goblin war chief. Sorry, chieftain will make everything a little bit bigger. That's great. But every turn that passes, Josh Bragoa can mount more of a defense. That Mangara of Corindor can take out something valuable, even if it's a mountain at this point, that's actually pretty valuable. We see a pile driver from Robert. I wonder if Robert knows that absolute or sorry, that um yeah, absolute law means he doesn't have to sting scourger his own guys. He might think that the card only protects Josh's creatures. Because mm. if he laid a uh, pile driver plus a sting scourger. That would be seven attackers. Each of the pile drivers would be attacking for lethal, which would mean they'd both have to be blocked. Which would mean that the remainder of the creatures would all get through except for one. There it is. Okay. That's the play I was talking about right there. So what's going to happen is both of his pile drivers are going to be blocked. There are going to be five more goblins. One of those is going to be blocked. One of the two powers. And that's going to mean that there's going to be six damage that's going to hit Josh Bergoa upside the head. You know, I almost think it's okay for him to swing in here because he's got the other goblin chieftain in hand. And if he draws a land, you know, I mean, Josh can only block three of those guys. 
and he can still overwhelm him next turn. And, he, and, and even without the Goblin Chief, I mean, he's sure he loses his two best goblins, but I, I, I think I think Robert can pull it out here. I agree. I think you come in with everything. I mean, as long as, you know, Josh doesn't drop, like, three Mother of Runes next turn, or, you know, I, I, I think I think he'll be all right. But he... Okay, declines to take him to one. Now the Mangara can block and sacrifice after blocking to take out something. Mm. Looks like Josh drew a Horizon Canopy. Sting Scourger, importantly, has Echo. Ah, yes, that's right. For four. It's not going to be able to stick around. If he wasn't going to attack, that Sting Scourger shouldn't have hit play. I agree. All right, so it's like Josh just has two lands in hand. Horizon Canopy and uh, either a port or a uh, wasteland. And Robert... Is that another war chief? Plays the chieftain and goes in for the swing. Now, what's different from this and the last turn is that the Mangara can actually take care of two things, and Josh is now completely untapped. So, any tricks like a source of plowshares can come into the equation. I have your cellular phone. I've also called your mother. So you need to call her soon. All right, so. Some stubby guy says hi to your mom, I think. I'm the stubby guy. So we got some blocks in for Josh. Oh. Okay. Call your mom, Michael. I know I'm going to do it. Some interesting announcements going on over at the event stage. John Carter, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you were able to overhear the um, head judge of yesterday's event, John Carter. All right. One so, and only. Uh, looks like the Mangara took out the Goblin Chieftain. A bunch of stuff dies. And yes. <laughs> How? But Josh also takes a good bit of damage. Not as much as we would like were we um, Robert Cohn. All right, and Josh goes down to two. Josh needs some life gain or needs a blocker? He needs a batter skull. Batter skull would be the best. Retriever. Revoker. Revoker. I always call him Retriever. I don't know why. I've been doing that for... I actually misregistered him as Retriever once. Oh, no. <laughs> and another Mangara. <laughs> In for three. If you look now, four creatures in play, facing off against four creatures. Robert needs to draw two creatures that he can cast in order to be able to uh, kill Josh now. I, I, saw, I think he's, he's got another war chief in hand. He needs to be able to cast two creatures, though. So he's, he drew a land, so that could help him out. It's a wasteland, I think. Might not be good enough. He's got the Tuk Tuk Scrapper, which is a little too expensive for him. He's, he's trying to figure out how he can do this. I think I see Wasteland. I'm not 100% sure that that's a Wasteland, but oh, I think I see Wasteland. he's got the Surgical wasteland. Extraction in his hand too, which is... What is the surgical extraction there I for? I don't quite understand why the surgical extraction extraction was there. Chieftain. If he waits, that Mangara of Corridor is going to do some more work. But if he attacks, he's only going to do one damage and he's going to lose nearly everything. Hmm. How is he going to get that last point of damage in?
Robert is now at the point where in order to win the game, he has to draw, I believe, Goblin Grenade or Goblin Sharpshooter. Looks like there's a goblin, <coughs> goblin matron taking him down to one. So he's hoping for a miracle. I think this turn when he, uh, or this game when he got the ringleader instead of the pile driver, that was the game. And then when he cast the Sting Scourger and didn't attack, mm -hmm. that was another moment where it was the game. Yeah. See, if he had kept that Sting Scourger, he could have played that out. And Actually, he would, he would be in really great shape right now. Yes. That would have been enough to kill him on this turn. Don't think he wants to use that Horizon Canopy for mana. He draws immediately, just so he doesn't accidentally mistap. Note, it's worth noting, at this point, Josh Bergoa can attack for seven. So next turn, if Josh doesn't lose any creatures, which might be hard for him to do, Robert Cohn will be dead. Mm. So Robert untaps, and let's see what he draws. Gem Palm Incinerator, which actually cannot be cycled. <sighs> Not what he wanted to draw, that's for sure. Nothing for the Tuck Tuck Scrapper to eat. This has been Surgical Extraction sitting in Robert Cohn's hand, wondering why he's there. I still don't understand why he cited that in. Maybe to take out his swords to plowshares, or...? So... Tuck Tuck Scrapper comes into play. Tuck Tuck Scrapper can't scrap anything. Nope. Not even that Phyrexian Revoker. Oh, he <laughs> wishes that he could. <laughs> Did not draw that Miser's Goblin Grenade. And he, we don't know if he sideboarded it in Sharpshooter or not, but, uh, oh, look at this. Doing the Mangara of Corridor trick, meaning that uh, Robert Cohn has another draw phase. Josh Bergoa could have attacked for the kill. Oh, wow. Robert Cohn has one more turn now to draw Goblin Grenade. These are those moments I really hope somebody draws the card. <laughs> I, I hate to say it too, but you almost want to see it happen just to see it happen. The important but. thing to remember too, most mistakes don't cost you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Honestly, that's one of the reasons why people don't realize how many mistakes they make. He taps the top one time, dealer. Flip it over. Oh, oh it's a he needed that a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's waste your, <laughs> your Caracas. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> now the thing is, oh, what do we got here? This hard Cassie incinerator. Yep, he no longer has haste, so, uh, I mean, auto haste for all of his goblins. He's got to wait now, and maybe Josh won't realize he can win again. Got to play your outs. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. There's another Oh, no. oh. He doesn't realize. Oh, no. Oh, Robert Cohn. <laughs> Robert One Cohn. One more time. One oh, time, wow. time. <laughs> Two time, time. Craziness. Oh, oh all that Robert goodness. Cohn needs to do now is top deck his one outer. He didn't have any outers, but Josh says have an outer. Or, well, Twice. 
can the goblin, or he might have, I, I don't know. The sharpshooter won't do it anymore. It has to be the goblin grenade. Oh, that <laughs> almost looks like goblin grenade. Is that shattering spree? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, and looks like that's it. That's and it. And Josh takes it down. What an exciting match. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nice to see uh, not a blue white stone blade here. <laughs> no, that, that was that was lots of fun to watch. One, two, three, four, five. This is round eight of the Star City Games Live Open Series. We've shown you today six rounds of uh, of.